Hello, this is Gernge with another quick tip video. Today we'll walk through the rig that I use for all of my car animations. It's a pretty great rig that is capable of a lot, and it should work nicely for pretty much any car, truck, or whatever else you throw at it. So the rig I've been using for five years now comes from Mateo, and it's pay what you want on Gumroad. I think it's absolutely worth the $5 list price. I've got it open here, and it's the most recent version as of June 2023. So we have this null here and a spline. Let's copy these into the file that I plan on working in. Here in our main working file, I've got a model of a Nissan Silvia S13, which I think looks pretty cool. It's got a nice set of wheels, as well as some pretty good quality brake caliper models. Optional, of course, but if your car has them, I'll show you how to include them. First of all, we have our car. So this is all of the stationary body parts of the car. We don't have the wheels or any of the brake components. Here we'll start with the left front wheel, which has the wheel, the tire, and in this case, the brake rotor, since that spins along with the wheel. And then we have the brakes null, which includes the brake caliper, its mount, and the knuckle. We can then see we have render instances. The way I like to set this up is with the wheel and the brakes having the same position. This makes things easier once we get it in place and we're repositioning things in the rig. And if we spin the wheel, we can see that this spins very nicely. There's no wobbling. Okay, so let's properly get to work now. The first thing I like to do is duplicate the car. So if we open up the original rig, we'll see we have the car body. So the way that I like to do this is I turn that off. I'm gonna put that there and reset its position. We see in the rig the corresponding nulls for the four wheels. So I'll get those in place now. With the four wheels in place and their corresponding nulls and all of their positions reset, we can move on to the brakes. So as you can see, there were a few times when I would put one of my pieces into place in the null and then I'd have to rotate it, say 180 degrees in order to spin it around. That's totally okay. Just follow logic or common sense in terms of repositioning or re-rotating any of these things into place. For example, if your tires include any sort of writing or text, you should try to rotate them into place instead of scaling them or inverting their scale. That way the writing or text is going in the correct direction. So everything should be in the correct place as far as our object goes. I'll go through and I'll delete the default pieces of geometry. Now, of course, this looks a bit weird because the height is messed up and the wheels aren't exactly in the right place. So let's turn on our original car, move this forwards a bit, and we'll use this as a base now, making it darker just as a simple reference point. So as far as the rig goes, we can just select the body and move that back down. It's up to you as far as positioning it on the Z axis. There are some controls here on the rig though that we need to get right. The first one will be the wheelbase. The next thing I want to adjust is the wheel radius here. As we shrink this value, we see this circle right here is shrinking. Now this should match the overall circumference or radius. It's important to get this one correct since it controls a lot of the math related to the wheels rolling. So our lighter color wheels are the rigged version and the darker ones are the original. We can see that the rigged wheels aren't coming out quite far enough. So we have a width parameter right here. And we can also now see that the body is perhaps a little bit too low. Seems like things are getting quite close now. If I turn off the original version and grab this main control null, we can see rolling the car, things are looking quite nice. And the brake calipers, pay special attention to those. Those are not moving, which is correct. But if we steer the car, we see that they move along with the front wheels, so that's great. So we've seen the steering control. We also have a drift control, which works quite good to kick the back end of the car out if you need to animate that. So we have that spline that came in with our rig. We can give that a shot here with the align to spline tag. We can drag this in. Now, of course, you can feel free to use any spline that you've got. We can see that the car is moving and the wheels are rolling accurately. 
So that's, that's really it. The rigging process is complete now. Our object is all looking good. We can explore some more of the controls of the rig. We've got some banking and some tilt working quite nicely for manual keyframing. We've pretty much got this good to go. I'll close things out now with a few small bonus how-tos regarding this specific rig. For my JDM fans, if we want to add camber to the rig, we can do so in the front by coming up to the stuff null, finding the corresponding null for, say, the front left wheel, and then adding some Z rotation right here. We'll do the same on the other side. If you want to add it to the back, it's in a little bit different of a place. So you'll find the corresponding caliper and the corresponding null. So we've got these back left here on the tag. We can add a bit of offset, just like that. So that's looking pretty good. We'll do the same for the other side. As seen on the product page, the rig also has the ability to clamp to a surface. When doing that, you also have some bounce and stiffness as well, and also some noise scale for the wheels. So we've walked through how to take our own custom vehicle and input it into the rig, get everything working nicely, and walked through some of the settings and some additional things that we can tweak. I think that's a great place to wrap things up now. All you have to do is animate the car. So I really hope that this helps out the next time you're tasked with rigging a car. This is the exact rig that I love using, and I think everything works really smoothly on it, so I've got confidence that you'll be able to pull it off. If you found this useful, please consider liking or subscribing to see more of my quick tip videos. And thank you so much for watching.